Hi, my name is Bryce Johnson. I work on accessibility and inclusive design for Microsoft devices. I'm one of the inventors of the Xbox Adaptive Controller, which today I'm going to show you how it can empower gamers with limited mobility to play. But first, before we get started, I want to show you some wonderful clips of people out there. The Xbox Adaptive Controller started at a hackathon in 2015. It was the brainchild of my colleague Matt Height, who was working with a charity at the time called Warfighter Engaged, who made controllers for people with disabilities. And, and Matt basically saw a need to create a device that could help um, people quickly create um, controllers that kind of fit them. And so our all inspiration was always to create a device that adapted to the individual. Um, and from that, we had, to, we had a powerful kind of recognition from working with these folks. Ken Jones of Warfighter Engage brought us Sergeant Josh Price to the hackathon in 2015. And Josh showed us his setup that he used with Ken. And it was really powerful and inspirational for us to understand how people needed adapted controls and how they needed controls to fit him. And to be honest, what the challenge was with our traditional controller. So the thing about our traditional controller that you have to recognize is that this has been optimized around a use case that assumes that you're going to use it one way. It assumes that you're going to use it with with two hands. It assumes that you have thumbs that are fluid and have a range of motion. It assumes that you have four fingers that can basically reach these bumpers and triggers. It assumes that you are able to like fluidly hit all the buttons on the controller and that you have the strength to hold it. And it was important for us to recognize that if you couldn't do this, that it wasn't your fault, it was the controller's fault and we had to do something about it. When we designed the Xbox Adaptive Controller, we saw that assistive technology always strive to be really powerful. And sometimes the way that they went about it made it really complicated. So we really wanted the device to be simple as possible. And the way that we approached that was to actually make sure that each control um, was exported on the controller in a really kind of simple way. But in, a, in an unusual sort of twist, what that meant was that um, we added 19 ports here on the back for simplicity. What I mean by that is there are 17 buttons on an Xbox game controller. Every button has a corresponding port here on the back of the adaptive controller that you can externalize to a switch, like one of these Logitech gaming switches. Um, so we wanted it to be simple enough so that people could plug in and unplug switches from the controller without having to go into software to remap it um, all the time. Now that um, doesn't mean that we don't have software remapping. I'm going to get to that a bit later. But what we wanted to do was we wanted to create a device that people if they just needed a couple things that are really simple, they didn't have to go in and learn how to use a new piece of software to, to just to use the controller. Another thing that we recognized really early on was that it was important to give people sort of more flexibility in the devices that they used. Um, having to buy switches and bespoke things just to use the adaptive controller was never our intent from the beginning. So we had a feature that really helped us um, create something that could be used by a lot of folks. And so what that feature is, it's called Copilot. Now Copilot allows you to take two controllers, whether it's like an adaptive controller or a regular controller or two standard controllers, um, and basically pair them together to be a single controller on the system. And what this allows people to do, it allows you to, to use the controller that you have um, if you only need a little bit of uh, extra kind of um, functionality. And I'll show you a quick video here of someone who uses Copilot.
So you can see that person uses the controller on their face, and then they use the adaptive controller to add buttons around their face, which is actually a really powerful way for them to use these two things together. Another thing that we thought about with Copilot was that you could actually have someone with limited mobility, if they could only press one or two buttons or use one joystick, you could have them do the majority of the fun parts of a game and you could enlist a co-pilot. You could enlist someone to take a typical controller who doesn't have limited mobility and they could basically help you kind of go through a game. Now, that doesn't mean that they're playing for you. What it means is that they're they're acting as your co-pilot. They're doing the things to help you kind of move forward. And again, like we always encourage folks to basically give the fun stuff to, to people um, out there. So, you know, if a person can only use one joystick and press one button, then that's aim and shoot, and they can enlist a co-pilot to do everything else. And I've got a video here that demonstrates that, which is from All Access Life. Um, they're a wonderful group of guys that uh, basically show how they use co-pilot. What's going on, All Access um. Lifers? Brad's over at my place today for a big old gaming day. We're gonna be playing some Fortnite for you guys today using Brad's Xbox adaptive controller. And we'll be using an accessibility feature that Microsoft has called Copilot, which essentially allows two controllers to merge together and act as one. Let's open this up. Okay, start hitting, start hitting. Okay, hit, 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 hit. There he is, shoot him, shoot him, shoot him, yes, yes! Oh, so we go that one. Okay, we gotta go this one. You have to open fast. You have to open this one fast. Open, open, open. Okay, pick that up. Pick that up. Pick that up. Okay, now get ready to shoot. Shoot, shoot, shoot. Hold out. Yeah, yeah. Hold it down. Hold it down. Hold it down. Come on. Come on. Yes. Yes. We got him. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So I said before that the Xbox Adaptive Controller has powerful software remapping. Let's get into it. We start by going to the Start menu and opening up the Xbox Accessories app. Here we have the Xbox Adaptive Controller, and now we click the Configure button to go in and check it out. On the side here are all the profiles that are shared to my um, account, everything I've ever made, but currently the device has zero profiles. So we're going to take a profile and we're going to assign it to a slot on the device. We're going to take this GAD profile and we're going to put it in slot one. There's three slots on the device and now it's in there and you can take this controller to any Xbox or PC and it'll have that profile embedded on the controller. Now let's edit it. So in here I have a number of things set already pre-configured. The first thing we're going to look at is a shift button. So shift I've assigned to the X2 button and basically it is like shift on a keyboard. It allows one button or joystick to become a different value when shift is held. So you can see that I have some remapping already. The large icon is the primary button and the smaller icon is the shifted value. And sticks can also be shifted. Right now what I've done is I've set the primary stick to actually be swapped. So the right stick is actually the left stick by default. And I know that's a bit confusing, but you'll see how it works in the game. So right stick when shifted is actually right stick. Okay, and that's that profile. This is a shift button. So when I press this, I swap this stick from left stick to right stick and I swap a bunch of buttons. So if you hear this click while I'm kind of playing, you know I'm shifting, and I'll tell you when I'm shifting, too. Here is an overhead view of what I'm going to show you today using the Xbox Adaptive Controller. So in the center here, we have our Xbox Adaptive Controller. We have our Logitech Gaming Kit, pieces from our Logitech Gaming Kit, just two buttons out of 12, um, and one of the mounting pads. Um, we have our PDP one-handed joystick here which is plugged in right over here on the right side of the controller. And this thing that's kind of looming up here is that, is that button I was telling you about. Um, it's on um, a mic stand. So one of the things that I like to explore is how to create assistive technology kind of inexpensively. So this button is basically a mic stand, which is very inexpensive. There's an arcade button that's glued into the microphone holder. Um, and then on the end of that arcade button, I've glued basically this little rubber ball. Um, to give it a little bit of a click there, and I'm going to use that with my face today.
Okay, let's play some Minecraft with one hand. First thing we're going to do, we're going to go into settings. Then we're going to go to controller settings. And we're going to turn on auto jump. Auto jump is something that's really important. It's really, a, um, when you're using a one-handed setup, it works really well. Then we're going to go into the marketplace. And we've introduced some educational content that comes from our Minecraft education collection. These are some of the educational titles. Today we're going to use Washington, D.C. And we're going to create this world. So now we're in this Washington, D.C. Minecraft world, and I'm going to show you how I use it using one hand with the Xbox Adaptive Controller. So I have my PDP one-handed joystick here, and right now it's set to walk using the left stick. So forward and back, left and right. But if I click this button with my face, it all of a sudden becomes a shift key, and now I can basically look around. So one joystick lets me use two joysticks um, via the power shift. So the other thing I can kind of do is what I've set is I've set my buttons here to, um, this is now inventory, so this is going to pull up the inventory, and then this button here will basically tab through the inventory. So what are we going to get? Well, let's get some more mob eggs. Uh, let's get, oh, let's get a pig. It's always nice to get pigs. We'll get five. No, we'll get a bunch of pigs. Now I'm going to go over here and I'm going to basically be out of this by using this button that I have here. The other thing I could have done is I could have held shift and hit this button. It's both the kind of the same thing. So again, I'm going to look around and this time I'm going to actually go to my pickaxe. And how I get to that is I basically bump over to pickaxe. And now I can basically mine using my pickaxe. Um, you know, turn around. I probably shouldn't be mining in the middle of, of downtown Washington, but we'll see what kind of happens there. So yeah, still one hand, kind of maneuvering around. Whoops, it looks like I fell into a hole that I dug. So luckily I can just climb out of it using auto jump, which in Minecraft is really cool. So now that we've shown you how to use the pickaxe, let's actually have some fun. Let's actually spawn some, uh, some parrots here. So I'm going to bump over to parrots, basically using this button. Um, and then I'm going to hold down shift, and now I can spawn some parrots. Now, imagine someone in Washington, D.C. basically putting a bunch of parrots down. Let's have some more fun. Let's switch to pigs. We'll spawn some pigs. Here's a pig. Here's a piggy. 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 All right. And that's how we use uh, uh, one joystick with the Xbox Adaptive Controller um, to play a, a one-handed Minecraft setup. Thank you for letting me talk with you today. My name is Grover. Sean. My name is Ian. I'm Taylor. My name is Owen, and I am nine and a half years old. I only have one. <laughs> and yeah. I love video games, my friends, my family, and again, video games. Whenever I play it, it makes me feel happy. The fun that you get to have with connecting with your friends. You make your own rules. It's his way of interacting with his friends when he can't physically otherwise do it. When I'm playing with a regular controller, there's some things that don't work for me. It's difficult for me to use both joysticks and the D-pad at the exact same time. And it just slowed me down a bunch more while other people were like, oh, do, 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 do. she's never had the freedom to play at the level she knows she could. I never thought it was unfair. I just thought, hey, this is the way it is and it's not gonna change. What I like about the adaptive controller is that now everyone can play. I don't even have to look at the controller and just be like looking at the screen like, hey, yep, yep. You never want your kid to feel like an outsider or an other. One of the biggest fears early on is, how will Owen be viewed by the other kids? <laughs> He's not different when he plays. It's a little challenging, but that's the whole point of gaming. I can hit the buttons just as fast as they can. And I think I can crush my friends. <laughs> no matter how your body is or how fast you are, you can play. It's a really good thing to have in this world.